Welcome to section 44 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Borrelia burgdorferi, which causes Lyme disease. You can see Borrelia right here. This scene takes place at a fancy car dealer business with this burglar guy attempting to break in. As you can see, he has a mask on and is getting ready to break into the back door. So burglar for Borrelia burgdorferi. Next, notice that we've shown a spiral staircase that goes from the first floor of the business to the second floor. This is to help you remember that Borrelia burgdorferi is spiral shaped, so it's a spirochete. This is an image of Borrelia burgdorferi using a dark field microscopy technique. As you can see, the organism is spiral shaped. All right, now notice that we've added a sign in the northeast corner of the image that says northeast corner. This is here to help you remember that the organism is common in the northeastern part of the United States. Now notice that we've shown the burglar guy eating some Tic Tacs. I guess he wants his breath to be fresh during this robbery. Also, the fact that he's eating this below an exit sign should help you remember exodes. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that Borrelia burgdorferi is transmitted through the exodes tick. This is an image of the exodes deer tick, and as you can see, they're pretty small and can be difficult to spot, so tick bites often go unnoticed. Now notice that we've shown a girl with very long red hair who appears to be changing a baby's diaper. Let's zoom up so you can see this better. If you've ever seen the show Anne of Green Gables, then you can probably appreciate that this girl with long red hair resembles Anne. And Anne sounds like anaplasma, so she'll be our symbol for this bug. Also, baby sounds like babesia, so Anne is here changing the baby to help you remember that the Exodes deer tick is also a vector for anaplasma and babesia. Notice that we've also shown Anne trying to entertain the baby with some games. Games sounds like gimsa, so we've included this here to help you remember that Borrelia can be visualized using the gimsa stain. This is a stain that uses aniline dyes and is very similar to another stain called the right stain. This is an image of a gimsa stain of Borrelia, and as you can see, the organism is shown right here. All right, if we zoom back out, now you can see that we've added a deer chasing a mouse in the parking lot. These two friendly animals are here to help you remember that deer and mice are reservoirs for Borrelia and are important to the tick life cycle. Now let's turn our attention back to the burglar. As you can see, his shirt has a target on it because he just bought this shirt from Target. I guess he wanted a new clean shirt with very little of his DNA on it for this attempted robbery. Anyway, the target has a bullseye, and this is here to help you remember that stage one of Lyme disease is associated with a bullseye rash, which is also known as erythema migrans. Okay, before we go any further, you should know that Lyme disease has three stages. So we've organized the image in a way to help you easily compartmentalize this information. Everything right next to the exit sign right here will represent stage one of Lyme disease. Everything inside of the building on the first floor right here will represent stage two of the disease. And finally, everything inside of the building on the third floor right here will represent stage three of the disease. Okay, with this in mind, let's move on. This is an image of erythema migrans. As you can see, there is a central region of erythema right here, which is surrounded by a ring, and this resembles a bullseye. Next, notice that we've shown the burglar guy sweating profusely. This is understandable, right? He's about to break into a car shop, so he's a bit nervous. Anyway, the sweat is here to help you remember that stage one of the infection is associated with flu-like symptoms. All right, now let's move on to discuss stage two. As you can see, we've added a bell right next to the entrance. Every time a customer walks in, the bell rings and alerts the staff that someone has just entered the building. Bell sounds like Bell's palsy, which is here to help you remember that stage two is associated with Bell's palsy. This is an image of Bell's palsy, and as you can see, this is characterized by paralysis of half of the face. So notice that as this patient attempts to smile, we only see half of a smile. Also notice how the eyebrows and forehead appear different. So this side of the face is normal, and the opposite side is paralyzed. This is an image from neurology, which we discussed in the sections on the cranial nerves. I'm not going to walk through the pathophysiology again, but it is important that you understand how Bell's palsy develops, so I would highly recommend that you go review this information if you haven't covered it yet or if you've forgotten it. Okay, now notice that we've shown one of the cars on fire and this employee is attempting to put it out. We've been using cars in our other images to represent cardiac problems. So the fact that this car is on fire should help you remember carditis or inflammation of the heart. So stage two of Lyme disease is associated with carditis. Now you can see that we've added a pregnant lady trying to come into the store, but she's being turned away by the manager with a sign that says closed. I guess the car incident has made it unsafe for customers, so they're closing early today. Anyway, this manager guy is essentially blocking the customers from entering the car store, which should make you think of atrioventricular block. The fact that he's in a car store should make you think of cardiac block. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that stage two is associated with AV block. Now let's move on to discuss stage three. Notice that we've added two employees on the second floor of the building. 
One of the employees is working hard on his knees and scrubbing the ground. As you can see, his knees and elbows have become quite red from all of this work, which looks pretty painful. The fact that the knees are red, and now that this pain has migrated to the elbows, is here to help you remember that stage 3 of the infection is associated with migratory arthritis. This is a condition characterized by joint pain that spreads from one joint to another joint. So just think of pain in the knees that has migrated to the elbow joints for migratory arthritis. While one employee is hard at work, the other is goofing off. Notice that he seems to think it's pretty hilarious to dump the bucket of water on this poor guy's head, who is so diligently scrubbing the floors. The fact that the water is on his head helps point toward a brain infection. The fact that it's being poured all over refers to an infection of the entire brain, so encephalitis. So stage three of the infection is associated with encephalitis. All right, now that we've talked about the three stages, let's finish by discussing treatment. Remember the burglar guy? Well, he drove here on his dirt bike, but intends to leave in an expensive sports car. Just like in our other images, the dirt bike is here to help you remember doxycycline. So first line treatment for Lyme disease is doxycycline. Now you can see that we've added a guard to the image. This is an expensive building with a lot of valuable stuff inside. So the business has hired the security guard to patrol the perimeter. If we zoom up a bit, you can clearly see that he's wearing an ammo belt, which is our symbol for amoxicillin. Also, the fact that he's right next to the pregnant woman and the child should help you remember that amoxicillin should be used in pregnant women and children. Finally, notice that the little girl is holding a toy squid or a cephalopod toy. This is to help you remember that cephalosporins, such as cefuroxime, can be used in pregnant women and children. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 50-year-old female presents to the physician due to a rash on her leg that she first noticed yesterday. She also states that she has felt general malaise since returning home from a hiking trip to the Appalachian Mountains three days ago. Physical examination reveals a rash on the left leg with a central area of erythema and a surrounding erythematous ring. If left untreated, which of the following complications is most likely to occur in this patient? A. Pneumonia B. Meningitis C. Arthritis D. Hepatitis or E. Aplastic anemia Okay, there are two key points you need to recognize from the question stem to get this one right. First, she recently traveled to the Appalachian Mountains, which is located on the East Coast. And second, she developed a rash on the left leg with a central area of erythema and a surrounding erythematous ring. This is describing erythema migrans, or the bullseye rash associated with stage 1 of Lyme disease. This rash occurs in approximately 80% of patients and is pretty unique to Lyme disease. Also, the fact that she just traveled to the East Coast in a wooded area where the Ixodes tick is prevalent is highly suggestive of Lyme disease. So with this in mind, the correct answer is C, arthritis. From the image, recall that the bullseye target on the burglar shirt right here should help you remember erythema migrans. Also, the guy with the red swollen knees and elbows on the second floor of the building right here should help you remember that migratory arthritis is a complication of Lyme disease that is associated with stage 3 of the disease. If we return to the question, you can see that A, B, D, and E are all red herrings because these are not classically associated with complicated Lyme disease. So again, the correct answer is C, arthritis. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about Borrelia burgdorferi.